Good morning. It's Friday, August, uh, October, not August 9th. We're getting started with your adjectives bell ringer. These are the what you should be looking at. It is in your ELA journal. Open up your um, ELA journal. You can copy and paste and highlight the adjectives, or you can just write the adjectives. Make sure you put today's date in your journal. We're going to quickly go over this so we can get started for the day. We have a lot to do because we need to go over Bud Not Buddy study guides, which I checked this morning. And based on what I checked this morning, a lot of you need me to go over it because you did not turn it in. All right. The food tasted bitter. Bitter. I was ashamed that I didn't pass my test. The story was very brief. I felt very comfortable in my new home. And the man was very creepy on Halloween. Good. Any questions? Sounds like y'all got it. All right, make sure you have that in your ELA journal. I'm going to give you just a second and we're going to watch Tone. The link is on your. Um, assignment for today on canvas so once you have this done in your ela journal you need to pause the video and watch that video from miss newburn at ag cox about tone and then come back to this video okay you should have watched the tone video with miss newburn from ag cox if i added this anchor chart up to so it can hang in the room and i'll take a picture of it and put it on the canvas site i need to update that um Remember that mood is about you. It's about the reader. It's how you're feeling. If you're feeling it and you feel sad, that's the mood. The tone is what the author says, the attitude that they have. Okay, does that make sense? So the tone would be like mysterious, but you feel, how would you feel if it was mysterious? Starts with an S. <laughs> scared so they set the tone mysterious you feel scared does that make sense so the tone is set by the author the mood is how you feel mood me mood me tone author does that make sense okay we are now going to move to the bud not buddy study guide so if you will please open that now find it on your google drive so that we can do this together The first question that we're going to start with is Bud gets his nickname Sleepy LeBone and then we have these three questions that go with it. So somebody raise your hand and tell me what the answer to, I'm going to pull it up so we have a copy up here. So the first question is, how does Bud getting his nickname Sleepy LeBone fit in the overall structure of the novel? So when you think about the sequence of events, what did you put? What did you put, baby? Share it with me. Yes. Exactly. Everybody hear that? I can't say his name, but great job. It fits because it shows that Bud is being accepted into the family. Also that maybe they're not kicking him out anytime soon, right? He's going to be allowed to stay there. All right, what's that middle question say? How does Bud getting the nickname Sleepy LeBone contribute to the development of the plot? Now we know the climax of Bud Not Buddy is what? When he finds out that. When he finds out Hermione Calloway's his dad. So how does Bud getting his nickname Sleepy LeBone lead to what you just said was the climax, which was Bud finding out that Hermione Calloway's his dad? How does this contribute to the development of us finding out that Hermione Calloway is his dad. Um, the mom. 
Yes, go. Okay, but how does this scene contribute to that? You're right. Okay, the rocks. I think it's similar to the question they answer here. Knowing that like he'll be in the family and that builds his it builds his confidence where he gets to the point where he feels like he can tell about the rocks. So it builds the what? I think we need an R word over here. What's that called when you're with somebody else and you're able? You feel more comfortable and then you're able to have a conversation because you built a yes yes so it builds the relationship so that bud can open up and then therefore find out let them know about the rocks and find out about his mom. I can't smell because I have on a mask. <laughs> okay. Last question on this. How does Bud getting his nickname Sleepy Little Bone contribute to the development of characters? Okay, let's start with Bud. How does it develop Bud? Um, I feel like we need to use a, a word about that so like when something happens, you feel more confident. confident com I was going to say comfortable. Bud feels more comfortable. And therefore, his character is developed because he feels what? H how does he feel with them? Does he feel good? He feels safe. He feels like they're not going to kick him out. He's done traveling. He feels like he's home. How does it develop the band? Uh, the band, I think they feel Are you getting all this? Can you see it? Okay. Okay. The band, I think they feel What does it tell us about the band members as characters that they gave him the name? Like yeah, they're kind. They're nice. They're kind. They're accepting him. We already said that in the other word. One. Yeah, exactly. Good. Exactly. All right. Any questions about that? You could do those questions about any scene. Right? All right. The next part says setting. Where does the story take place? Can you start listing some settings for me? There's a lot. So y'all start shouting them out. I'm going to write them down. Um, There's a lot. Shout them out. Okay, where in Grand Rapids? Give me specific places. Where he ate. Okay, so the mission. Is that what you mean? Or did you mean the sweet pea? The mission. Okay, but also the sweet pea. Yeah. Say it again. Blueberry. Yes. What else? Um, the Hooverville? Yeah. Sweets? The Orphanage? Grand Calloway Station? Whoops. Yep. I think that pretty much covers it. What was the second question there? How have the setting, how has the setting impacted the novel so far? How does, 
how does the setting impact the novel? You could pick one particular setting to tell me about, or you could just be general and talk about the settings in general. Pardon interruption. Staff, we've just been a benefactors of some really nice Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm gonna place them in the bake break room. These are courtesy of Miss Kim Austin, one of our parents. So when you see her or hear from her, tell her thank you. Have a good one. What? Is my last name Austin? Okay, so tell me about the settings and how they impact the novel. Um, Does I, Bud act the same in all those different places? No, because when he was uh, sleeping under the Christmas tree, he was nervous because... Exactly. So how does the setting impact the novel? It changes what? It changes moods. Yes, it changes Bud. But it changes Bud's moods and develops his personality. Is his personality at the same at the end as it was at the beginning? No. It, it changes Bud's moods and develops his personality to drive what? What does it drive? Be more broad. You're being very specific. What is it called? What use a sixth grade term? What's it called? Plot. Yes, it drives the plot. Absolutely wonderful. Does everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Questions? Questions? Good. All right, characterization. I'm gonna have to go to a new piece of paper. Characterization. Who's your favorite character in the novel and why? And how does this author develop the character? All right, I'm gonna change to a new piece of paper. If you need to take a screenshot, take a screenshot. Click, did you get it? All right, we're moving over here. All right, who is, give me a character and tell me how that character is developed and why they're your favorite character. Why? He's nice about the, like, the way he is and stuff. And he, he's kind and sweet. How is she developed? Um, he is definitely kind. She's kind. She's like a, a motherly figure to Bud. Yes. Now give me another character. Give me another character. Okay. Tell me about him. Why is she your favorite and how is he, how does the author develop him? We just talked about a lot of it over there. Okay. Is he respectful at the beginning? No. So tell me about his personality and how it is driven, how Christopher Paul Curtis develops his personality. Okay. He helps clean the dishes. Okay. So did that show his change? Yeah. So Bud is developed. And what do you call that when somebody is kind of mean and say oh, I don't cry and they're not willing to do so much and then they kind of grow up what do you call that it starts with the m I want to use that word here it has something to do with how I feel about Bud's personality 
maturity. Yeah. So he's developed throughout the story with his maturity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What else do you want to say about Bud? Uh, uh, he's like, um, like trying to find his father and uh -huh. stuff. And then he, when he thinks he found him, he was like, you're my father, but he, was, he wasn't his father, and then he started crying. And so he went from being kind of cold and immature to mature and helpful. Good. All right. Let's do one more character quickly. We got to go move quickly. Okay. What do you want to say about him? And then when she found out that when Bud told him that, that he was his mom, that um, he started being nice to Bud. Good. All right, we're going to go to context clues. Let me get a different color. Context clues. We got commence. What does that mean? It says when parts of your body start commits to falling off. Yeah, end up or start. End up. Good. All right, number two. Raggedy. What does it mean to be raggedy? Right. Okay, number two, gate. We talked about that a lot. We talked about gate a lot. Yes. Good, Gavin. Oh. Muskrat. They ain't muskrat stew. Yeah. It's an animal, yeah. It's a little like rodent. That's an R. Billy Club. What's a Billy Club? Yeah, like a baton. Conscience. It's it's like your what? It's like that devil on one shoulder. Are you getting all this? Devil on one shoulder, angel on the other. It's like your inner what? It's like your inner thoughts to do something good or bad. Bad. No good. Good. Your conscience is your inner all right number seven. Oh, I skipped ignorant sorry i mix those up ignorant and um conscience i mix up what's ignorant mean don't listen, don't listen not smart Uninformed. Number eight. Scrawny. What's scrawny mean? What did you say? Good. All right. Nine. Scamp. What's scamp? 
and then sympathy will be done with those. Yep. Uh, um, it's kind of like a, um, I'm trying to think of a way to say it. Like a rascal. That's a good way to say it. Rascal. A mischievous person. Like you little rascal. All right. What's sympathy? It's feeling sorry. Yep. Okay. Do not make note cards and try to memorize these words and definitions. That is not going to help you. You need to understand that these are going to be context clue type questions on your test. So I may pull one of these words, but I will include the sentence where it comes from, or it may be new words. More than memorizing these words and definitions, you need to understand context clue type questions where you are given a sentence and the word is in the sentence and based on the way the word is in the sentence, you have to tell me what that word means. Okay, that is what's important, not memorizing words. That You know what that does? It makes you spend your time memorizing something that does not help you become any smarter. You're going to become smarter when you can use context clue to figure out what that word means. If you look these words up in the dictionary, that doesn't do anybody any good but waste your time and mine because I don't want to grade it. Does that make sense? We are smarter than that now. When I was in school, I had to look up words in the dictionary. It's, there's no point. There's been lots of research done. We all now know that that does not make you smarter. Because you memorize it for the test, you do it, you do it, make 100 on the test, and then you still don't know the word two weeks later. Context clues, using the text around the word in the sentence is what we need to move towards. All right? All right, we need to do point of view and theme very quickly. I need a new piece of paper. And then we are going to roll because we have gotten it up. All right. New piece of paper. Point of view. What's the point of view of the story? It's told in what point of view? This question on your test. Line up, buddy. It's told from this point of view. What point of view? Yep, I heard it. Who said it? Don't say their name. Sorry. What point of view? Yes. That means that it's told, the main character is telling the story, the narrator is a main character, and they use I. I did this and I did that. Does that make sense? Okay. How does the point of view add to the novel experience? How does it add to your experience to be told by a bud? Because we know what. Do you know what Bud's thinking? Yes. How does that add to the novel experience? Say it again. Exactly. If it was told by a narrator, would we know what Bud is thinking and feeling? Most only if it's told in omniscient point of view. No. We sometimes you do, but but most often you might not. So it adds to the novel experience because we know, we know what Bud is thinking and feeling and we travel with Bud Yeah, so there's no scenes where it's somebody talking about Bud and he's not there. He's there. So if it was a play, he would be in every single scene. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, last one. Themes. What are some themes of the novel and how do they enhance the text experience? 
What's the theme? The message or the moral. So something that you could take away from this book and apply it to your life and make you a better person. No, don't, don't use that word. Use something that you can apply to your life. What'd you put? Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Love it. Perfect. Yes. Got, somebody got another one? Up, yes, same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Be yourself. <laughs> no, silly. All right, how do those themes enhance the text experience? That you to be a better person. Yes, ma'am. It motivates you when you read this story. Do you want to be Todd Amos? Mm -mm. No, nobody wants to be Todd Amos. So, does it teach you to basically not be a bully? Absolutely. So does it motivate you to be a better person? Yeah. yeah. Does it make you want to find out, you want to see Bud through because you want to find out if he truly was, shouldn't have given up hope. Did he really truly find his way? Does that make sense? All right. Study, study, study. Don't forget that you are going to have some questions that touch on those um, figurative language. Even though we haven't tested on figurative language yet, those text that say like here's an example of a metaphor how does this metaphor enhance the text experience how does this simile affect the text experience we talked about those yesterday or day before where i gave you the example with easy go don't make the mayor run we talked about what that really meant okay so you may be given a simile or a metaphor to tell me what that means does that make sense so be careful of those type questions i didn't have the questions like that on the study guide uh, make sure you know the point of view that is on the quiz. I think it's 20 multiple choice questions. So it shouldn't take you that long. You can use your book. Study. If there's any part of the novel that you have not read yet, you need to make sure that you read it this weekend. Okay, you can submit the study guide if you have not already done so. If you have already done so, I already gave you 100. So you guys are on the ball because you did it yesterday. Um, Please make sure that you um, review this this weekend, especially if there's something that in the novel that you haven't read yet. So I will not have you Monday. Monday is not a virtual day, it's a teacher work day. So I will see you guys on Tuesday. I will Zoom briefly just to make sure nobody has any questions and then you will start your test because you have your Bud Not Buddy test on Tuesday. You are to use your book on the Bud Not Buddy test. So don't return it yet. And then we're going to finish up the end of last week with some more figurative language and then a figurative language CFA. And then the next week we're starting refugee. I put a message on the dojo. If you are virtual and you would like a copy of refugee instead of using the PDF, please let me know. And I will get a copy in the office for you to come by and get. If you are face to face, you will get it from me. Um, are you guys A or B? Hi, I'm You're A. Are you A? Okay, so A week. We'll get theirs the day we start it, which is October 19th. B, I will give you yours next Friday. So you'll have it for the 19th, which is the day we're starting. All right, anybody have any questions? The exit ticket, word of the day is test. You have a button up buddy test. Okay, study. study.